Hey, Jared Borkowski here from SoundGuitarLessons.com. This is the four-year anniversary of Sound Guitar Lessons. Four years ago, I posted my first video on YouTube, and since then, I have published a lesson video every single Tuesday. And I'm filming this right now in mid-December of 2023. So for this video, I thought it would be fun to go back through the 50 lessons that I made this year and pick out my 10 favorite videos and feature a little clip from each of them. So we'll do this as like a top 10 countdown style and I will put links directly to each of the videos in the description so you can go deeper on any of them if you want to. I think this will be fun. Let's dive in. Pew. Coming in at number 10. That's catchy, coming in at number 10. This is a video that was published on September 5th called How to Play a Guitar Solo Over Simple Chord Progressions. This lesson breaks down several steps to work towards effectively improvising over pop chord progressions, that is like simple chord progressions that use triads and stay within one key. And the example chord progression in the lesson is a very classic one. It's one, six, four, five. This is a progression in the key of E in this video. So that's E major, C sharp minor, A major, and B major. And the clip I'm gonna play you is from the final step in the lesson. This is after having mapped out the chord tones of the chords and doing a bunch of other stuff. This final step, I demonstrate how to freely play around with uh, phrasing, not worrying about the notes, but then targeting one chord tone of the final chord of the progression at the end of a phrase. It's pretty cool. Check it out. Here's the clip. Now, what I did right there is the final step, seven, which is you do anything you want and you try to zoom out and play with whatever scale, pentatonic, blues, major, anything you want. You're zooming out, but then you're occasionally targeting a certain chord, right? And I landed, I played whatever I could do. And I landed on the third of E. So that's the benefit of outlining the chord tones. It didn't sound like I was playing triad chord tones. I was playing some whatever weird out stuff. And then I knew how to land at the beginning of the phrase on the third. That's, that's what mapping out all the chord tones was valuable for. So now let me suggest a way to do this that is like the most musical thing you could do. Tried and true. We're gonna do a phrasing structure of A, A, B, A, where you're gonna play an idea and you're gonna play it three times in a row over the one chord over the six chord, over the four chord, and then over the five chord, you're going to just target a chord tone of the five chord. Here's how it's gonna sound. Here it comes, ready? So three things in a row, could be anything. And then you target the five chord after that. This is really, really important because this E chord, E, and then C sharp minor, and then A, those can all kind of be the same harmonic function, and then five is the one that's actually different. So it's just down the scale. There's the core tone of five, the third of five. Lesson number nine, my ninth favorite lesson video of 2023. This is my whole tone scale guitar lesson published on January 24th, titled The Dream Sequence Scale, Whole Tone Scale Guitar Shapes and How to Use Them. This lesson, uh, I explain what the whole tone scale is, the history behind it, how it's used in music, how to practice it, all the physical shapes of it on the fretboard. Um, and then I demonstrate how it sounds over a dominant seven sharp five chord, which is today the most common use case for the whole tone scale, um, especially when it comes to improvisation. So that demonstration section um, over a C dominant seven sharp five chord is the clip that I'm gonna show you right now. Here it is. Hear how nebulous it is here, how open-ended it is there's no beginning there's no ending it's just the same everywhere you go it's this absolute ungrounded kind of sound it has no home base 
Even though C is the root of our chord, it still sounds like it doesn't have a home base. That, that dream sequence sound. Counting down, coming in at number eight is my lesson using chord inversions to compose on the guitar with voice leading. Published on March 14th, this lesson is titled Composing with Smooth Voice Leading, Inverted Chords Guitar Composing Tutorial. Uh, this lesson breaks down a specific progression that uh, uses voice leading and inversions. So instead of jumping between chord shapes like we often do on the guitar, every note moves to the smallest distance possible when the chords change. Uh, this is all about thinking on the guitar like a composer would think when writing for an orchestra or a string quartet or a choir or something like that. So thinking of exactly where every note moves. And the clip I'm gonna show you is really cool. This is a clip where I demonstrate how to take any chord progression after figuring out the smooth voice leading and adding chromatic notes in between the chords to create very advanced harmony without even needing to know about the theory or anything, just getting some awesome sounds out of it. Here's the clip, check it out. You can do this anytime for any progression, any voicing. All I'm gonna do is add notes that fill in the bridge between one note to another and we get really amazing sounds, really beautiful voice leading. And really this is kind of how harmony as an idea was invented in the first place. Just moving melodies because you wanted the melody to move and the harmony ends up being something different because the melody moved. You'll see what I mean, check this out. So I don't have this planned out or anything. I'm just going to add notes in between movements. I kind of like the first one already. Um, this is moving half step. You can't do anything there. What we could do with this concept is make what happens to be G minor, but I'm just thinking, move that top note, and then we have a half step motion. Now this one, um, we're usually jumping all the way over here, so we can go have a step in between, and then resolve like that, and you can even add more steps. I'm moving this down a half step. That was a very nice sound, and then this shape, and then, go to this G7 that we had. Don't worry about exactly what I'm playing. I'm not identifying everything for you because I don't want it to be sound like it's about that. I want to just say, try adding it, try filling in a note somewhere, filling in a gap where between a whole step, between a minor third, that kind of thing. So we're just adding in a bunch. Okay, that's that G7. Here's that C major. Here's that C minor. Okay, maybe I'll just go. Oh, cool. Very cool. I'm gonna move this down a half step by itself. And then this one down. And now we have that sus. Now here's that D. And we can resolve how we work. Coming in at number seven out of my top 10 videos of the year is my lesson on the modes of the melodic minor scale. Published on January 10th, this lesson is titled Modes of Melodic Minor Scale on Guitar and What Chords to Play Over Them. That's the key part, what chords to play over them. And modes are, in general, and especially the modes of the melodic minor scale, can be a little mystifying. So what are they? How are they used? How do we practice them? What's the point of learning them? That's the stuff I talk about in this uh, lesson. And each mode of the melodic minor scale is used over a very specific chord type. So in this lesson, I explain and demonstrate each of those chord types so you can hear how the sound of the modes sounds over each chord. And this clip uh, that I'm gonna show you is me demonstrating the fourth mode of the melodic minor scale, which is called the Lydian dominant scale. It's a scale that is used over a dominant seven sharp 11 chord. I love this sound. Here's the clip, check it out. I like this because there's just straight up a normal dominant seventh chord in there. You can just outline that with chord tones, which is always a great way to map things out. And then you can add the mode around it. So let's listen to it over this loop, okay? sound. This one, this mode is very useful. I use this more than the others because dominant seven 
with a sharp 11 is a type of chord that comes up more often than those other examples so far. Number six on the list of my 10 favorite lessons from this year is my finger picking lesson on thumb independence. This was published on June 13th. It's titled Enhance Your Finger Picking with These Thumb Independence Guitar Exercises. This lesson walks through a series of finger style exercises to help us play and hear multiple parts at the same time on one guitar. This clip is the third exercise in the video where I want us to keep our thumb playing constant, consistent bass notes while playing melodies through chord progressions. Check it out. Exercise number three is now we're gonna play just a single note root for a chord, but we're gonna switch chords. So let's say our chord progression is A, and then the next chord is E. Let's do A minor. So if you were just on the single note version, the exercise one, you could be jamming like this. Let's say the chord progression goes to E major or E7. You don't have to do a chord progression like that. You can kind of work with whatever you want. You could say, I'm gonna play C. Yes, you have to hold down a root note in that case, but you know, what are some notes above that work and keep that going. And then I'm gonna to switch to G. You know, something like that. So if I'm in this A minor, I'm just keeping that bass going. There's that chord change. One, two, three, four, one, two, one, you know, doing four counts on each chord. And so that's just the concept. Just root, 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 root four times or two measures of it and then switch chords. So you can try to find open strings are just so nice to do that with, but you can find a few places that work really well with that. And it is, if you like this type of practice, don't shy away from, you know, using some fretted notes as well and finding just a limited number of scale options that might work above it. So if you're holding down G, you can say, what's the G scale above that? And then switch to a C chord or just stay on that G or whatever. So the song version of this, let's do the What a Wonderful World. This is really advanced, but it is the song version of it where every chord change now, we're gonna play just a quarter note on the root of every chord. This is amazing for working towards song arrangements. So that takes work. You have to know the chords, you have to find the roots, you have to work out the fingering. Um, but once you kind of do that mapping work and make sure it all works out, then it's just about that coordination of keeping that going. And you're like one or two steps away from like a solo guitar arrangement where if you want to get rid of that quarter note driving thing and then fill in a couple chord shapes so you have a fuller sound every once in a while, you know, at the end there, um, or... Right, just spots where you can fill in more notes, you're getting really close to having kind of a finished arrangement or a version of something that sounds fuller. We're halfway through. Coming in at number five is my lesson called What Scales Go With What Chords? Finding the Right Scales for Chords on the Guitar. This one was published on May 9th and it goes over a few sneaky and very simple ways to figure out what scales could work over any chords in any chord progression for improvising or writing melodies. This clip I'm gonna play you uh, is me showing that we can use the pentatonic scale of any triad even when chords go outside of the key uh, to play, improvise, compose, whatever, play melodies over chords. Here's the clip, check it out. So if you don't know what key you're in, you don't know what scale you're supposed to be playing as the overall key, and if any chord comes up, and if it's a triad, you can safely use the pentatonic scale off that triad any time and it will sound amazing. Any major chord, any minor chord, play the major uh, pentatonic scale. So if I'm playing E major, major pentatonic scale, and then when, if it goes to C sharp minor, C sharp minor pentatonic scale, a, okay, yes, this is still in the key of E, but if we don't know that, A major pentatonic, it's going to sound amazing. If you go to B, B major pentatonic, those are all in the key, but what if it goes outside of the key? Well, you can still, this is now C major pentatonic. Now it really sounds like we're 
following the changes, right? So if you get a minor chord or a major chord in the key or outside of the key, and if you're not even thinking of the key, use the pentatonic scale, major pentatonic or minor pentatonic. This is what works anytime for triads, especially and specifically. Counting down, number four is a very recent lesson published on November 7th. I really like this one. This one is called Guitar Harmonics In-Depth Guide easy, pure, and beautiful sound. This video explains harmonics and overtones, natural harmonics, artificial harmonics, how they work, um, how to play them, how to practice them in a number of ways. Um, it's a very thorough video. This clip is me demonstrating playing artificial harmonics with a blues scale, a uh, really cool sound because it's a much higher pitch than we usually get out of the guitar. Here's the clip. Now I'm just going to pluck that as if same technique of the harmonic, I'm touching it slightly, and then I'm plucking. Okay, so we gotta talk about what the right hand is doing. There's three ways to do it, but let me demonstrate the sound first. So now, I can get any, I'm just playing a 12th, 12 frets above anything I play over here with the with the hand. So I'm playing an octave above what I'm fretting, but I have to touch slightly with my first finger, just like the typical natural harmonic technique. And then I have to also pluck with the same hand. So here are the three ways to do it. One, you hold a pick and you hold your first finger out and you pluck with the pick while the first finger's touching. It's gonna be awkward, but I'm plucking like this while that first finger's touching and I'm holding the pick. The second way is to do the same thing, but pluck with your third finger, your A finger, okay? This is done in classical guitar. Okay, and the third way is to do the same thing once again, but you're plucking with your thumb. And you can pluck with any finger and you can touch the harmonic with any finger, but these are the most common ways to do it, so. So now I'm touching with my first finger, plucking with my thumb, which has a tiny bit of nail on it right now. So I'm getting that. We're now in the top three. Video number three was published on April 11th and it did very well on the channel. People seemed to like this one. This one is titled Walking Between Chords on Guitar for Songwriting and Arranging. Uh, this is a multi-step lesson on playing little baseline connections between chords. This is super fun to do. I break down how to do this using one connecting note, then two connecting notes, then three, then four, and how to do it within scales and how to use notes that are not in the scale as well when making these little baseline connections. This clip I'm gonna play you is a demonstration of me connecting between chords with three connecting notes. Here's the clip. We're gonna do three scale notes leading into each chord. One, two, three. So we have to go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. On two, three, four, of the measure before the chord change, we're gonna find three notes up the scale. So for example, uh, two, three, four, bom, to A minor. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, bom. Now, all of these just get a whole different flavor all of a sudden. Bom, 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 bom. Sounds so cool. So. My second favorite video lesson of this year is my video on how to play any pop song using only two chord shapes. And really you could actually do this using just one chord shape. It's just much more practical to use the two chord shapes. So these chord shapes are shapes that I use as default go-to options when I'm playing anything or writing or learning songs or mapping out chords in a key. I love these voicings. Uh, this lesson was published on January 17th and it's titled Play Any Song with Just Two Chord Shapes with a little mind blow emoji. <laughs> this clip is a very short clip of me demonstrating how this works by playing different song examples. Um, I play Don't Go Chasing Waterfalls and uh, Crazy by Gnarls Barkley using just those two chord shapes and the shapes and chord names are highlighted on the screen as I play them. Here's the clip. Don't go chasing waterfalls Please stick to the rivers and the lakes that you're used to I know that you're gonna have it your way or nothing at all But I think you're moving too fast Does that make me crazy? Does that make me crazy? Does that make me crazy? Pop 
possibly. And lastly, my number one favorite lesson that I published this year in 2023. This one was published on May 30th, and it's my lesson titled, What Scale to Play Over What Chord? choosing what scale to use. This sounds similar to other lessons or one of the previous ones from this list, but it's different. It's talking about how to determine what scale to use over a chord for improvising or composing when you know for sure that mul multiple options work. Which one do you use? Uh, I really like this lesson because it's it's very laid back and it's it gets to the heart of treating music uh, and even our practicing as an art where anything goes that it's not just like a skill with right and wrong answers, which sometimes it can seem that way with all the music information. Um, and if you've seen any of my concept or practice philosophy videos in the past, then maybe you know that uh, as much as I love all the technical information and practicing in general, all of that for me is a means to an end. Uh, and it's for expressing something unique and individual and creative and meaningful and personal and treating what we're doing as an art and not just a craft um, is to me the the ultimate goal in the end. So this lesson is really cool. It shows how to choose between two different right answers when improvising or composing over chord progressions. This clip is me demonstrating the Mixolydian scale versus the blues scale over a D7 chord and how I listen and feel for the difference between the two. Here's the clip. So let's just listen to kind of the quality of, of each one over this loop. So here's Mixolydian. We get this. We get this kind of sweet uh, major scale-ish sound. You know, if you're ever wondering, you know, what's what's the feeling I'm getting from this, and when do I want one or the other? Think of like what guitar face someone would make, right? This one I think of as kind of like. Kind of that little smug smile face and then the blues scale is like it's like the attitude it's very interesting if you play the mixolydian which is actually where the dominant seventh chord comes from then play the the flat three it, it sounds like a wrong note it is a wrong note it's not in the scale or anything but yet it's so so commonly used in the pentatonic, minor pentatonic, and blues over a dominant seventh. But that's also why people do this. This kind of like bend, like, cause it's like, oh, something's wrong there. Gotta kind of bend it, not even necessarily bending it into the three, but just like a little bit of a bend and kind of get away from it. There's that major third from, from Mixolydian. Mixolydian, blues. There's Mixolydian. So this opens up the door into a way to practice these that we, I think we don't often think of, which is the kind of absorbing and, and kind of studying and feeling for, how does this make me feel? And do I want to hear this? And when do I want to express this with my feelings, you know, with the communication in music that I'm that I'm grasping for? That's it. That's my top 10 favorite sound guitar lessons of 2023. Uh, let me know in the comments which of these 10 clips was your favorite. And if you liked this lesson, please hit the like button. And all of this stuff and so much of what I rely on uh, to be able to compose and write songs and learn songs quickly and improvise and play jazz and see the fretboard clearly and understand theory and even read music better um, and improve my technique and execution, everything, all of that comes from knowing my scales really well. That's one of the huge, huge building blocks of all tonal music, which is why people always talk about learning your scales. So if you don't have it yet, grab my free scale resource. It's called the Printable Parent Scales PDF. It has seven core scales to know, each in multiple positions on the guitar and different shapes and forms on the fretboard. It shows the scale degree numbers. It has color coding for where the roots are. And these scares, these scales are what all the other scales and modes are born from. 
such as all those melodic minor modes, which is what we talked about in this video a little bit. Uh, you can get those the scales PDF totally for free with the link in the top of the description on YouTube, or you can go to soundguitarlessons.com slash scales. Well, it's been four years of doing one of these videos every week, and I can tell you, I'm not going anywhere. I feel like I'm just getting started, and I have exciting plans for the lessons that I'll be posting next year. Uh, I'm going to try some new stuff, which I'm very excited about, and I'll talk about that in a couple weeks from now, a couple videos from now. Uh, I'm able to keep this channel going and keep the free lessons coming by offering my paid courses at my website, soundguitarlessons.com. Uh, that's how I make a living. And every year at the end of the year, a lot of people reach out asking if I'll do a holiday sale or an end of the year discount sale or anything like that for my courses. And I haven't done that before, but this year I will be doing that. Uh, so my video next week will be kind of like this video, but I'll be sharing little highlights and sample clips from my paid courses. Um, that'll be kind of fun to feature some of that information on YouTube. Um, and I'll have a discount code you can use to get a percentage off any of my programs that are on my website. And that'll be good through the end of the year. Or you can just watch the clips from that video next week and hopefully benefit uh, from those little samples for free. Hope to see you in that lesson next week. Thanks for watching. Take care and happy practicing.